Our battle right now at the Stan Sheriff Center, along with the most outstanding player from the 1997 Final Four. Miles Simon, Roxy Burns and with you. And Miles, tough losses for both St. Mary's and Hawaii here last night. What are these teams playing for now after losing last night? Well, not only do they want to bounce back from tough losses last night, but it's important to set themselves up for Christmas Day to, to leave this tournament with a 2-1 record. You come out tonight with a win, you're 1-1, and, and Christmas Day, you can come out of here with another victory. We'll take us to the one-on-one. -on -one. What are you looking for in this matchup? Well, first for St. Mary's, Stephen Holt, he's had huge shoes to fill because Matthew Delvadova is no longer running this team, but he's being more than capable. Second in assist in WCC, can do it inside and out. Has to lead the way for the Gales. And then Christian Sandhardinger had a rough game the first night with only seven points. Must be more aggressive on the offensive end for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors if they want to pull out this victory. Starting five for the Gales, who are 9-1. Stephen Holt, Kerry Carter makes the start tonight. James Walker, the third, Bo Beck, and Brad Wald, the leading scorer for St. Mary's. For Hawaii, Garrett Nevels, Keith Schamberger, Brandon Spearman coming up a season-best 19. Christian Sandhardinger, Isaac Fotu, the starting five for the Bows. Gib Arnold, the head coach of the University of Hawaii in his fourth season. And he's reached 50 wins faster than any coach in the history of the Hawaii basketball program. And on the other side, two-time West Coast Conference Coach of the Year, Randy Bennett, his 13th season in Moraga. Five NC2A tournament trips for Randy Bennett, sitting next to Aaron Gannat, a former Hawaii assistant, one of the aides for Randy Bennett right now. Isaac Fotu will jump. Home whites for the Bows. St. Mary's, the visiting team, in the blue with the red numbers, and we are underway St. Mary's and Hawaii. I think for the St. Mary's Gales tonight, it's important to establish Brad Waldo early in this basketball game. Only four points in the first half, 16 in the second half last night in their loss. St. Mary's really struggled to get in any sort of rhythm at all. And Terry Carter just had him. He didn't wait long enough to make the post entry. Brad Waldo inside, and it's 2-0 Gales. And that's the guy that they have to get going. He's over 60% from the field on the year. He's hard to stop. He's a load down low. Excellent back-to-basket game. And on the other end, I think Isaac Fotu, he's a guy that Gib Arnold wants to be more aggressive, shoot more shots. There is Isaac Fotu inside. We saw that exact move last night by Fotu. He's so skilled in the post, excellent footwork and great touch, and you see that hand is wrapped up. He's playing with a broken hand, but it's really just taped and padded right now. Thirteenth meeting all time between Hawaii and St. Mary's. The Gales are seven and five. These two teams last met in the inaugural Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic as Bo Levesque makes it 4-2 St. Mary's. And that's just too easy. Bo Levesque just gets right to the middle drive and lays it in right at the rim. No contest by the Rainbow Warriors. In that matchup back in 2009, the Gales an 84-75 win over Hawaii right here as Isaac Fotu ties the game at four. What's amazing about Fotu is since he broke his hand in that New Orleans game, coming into tonight, 21 of 31 from the field, so the padding, the temporary cast has not really affected his shooting at all. Terry Carter launches and hits the three. And that's a huge bonus and a great start for Kerry Carter, a young man only scored five points last night, the only five points they got off the bench. Jordan Giusti started the first 10 games of the year, and Randy Bennett making a switch tonight, going with Carter. Miles in the lineup, is that to get more scoring and an offensive threat at the beginning of the game? Is Brandon Spearman inside the lane? Yeah, I think Carter, obviously more of an offensive threat, averages nearly 10 points per game on the season, but if you want to get him going early and get more of an offensive punch, he's the guy. James Walker, <laughs> and he got away with a double dribble on the last possession, nearly walked there. Last night, St. Mary's losing to South Carolina 78-71 as Walker hits a three. And it's 10-6 St. Mary's. But the Gales really struggled last night, and South Carolina shot 58% as Garrett Neville's missing a three and Kerry Carter clears. Well, St. Mary's was terrible on the defensive end. There's almost no other way to describe it. South Carolina got easy buckets in transition. They dominated the paint did whatever they wanted to do against this Gales team. 
and Hawaii just getting easy buckets. And here you see Brandon Spearman. He's the guy, number 32, with the long sleeves. Nobody finds him as he's just hiding on the baseline side. Excellent pass and easy finish. And neither team off to a tremendous start on the defensive end tonight either. It's tough to bounce back for these teams, I'm assuming, after playing such hard games here last night and tough emotional losses for both Hawaii and St. Mary's. You know, but I, I, I think young men, college guys, high school, they're more resilient than you think. And, and trust me, they would rather play a game than practice, <laughs> if that's the way you want to look at it. Trust me, they're ready to go. Once they put that uniform, those shoes on, the crowd is here, and, and they smell that popcorn when you come to the arena, they'll be ready to go. Foul away for the ball. And it's against Isaac Foto of Hawaii is first. Waldo, there's a lot of beef down low with Waldo at 260 pounds and Foto at 230. Just battling for position, both of them very physical. Neither one can either coach afford to get in foul trouble. Kerry Carter off the inbound. Long on a three and Brandon Spearman tracks down the rebound. Spearman attacks. Garrett Nevels, the baseline pull up. Nevels went three for seven from the field, but contributed seven rebounds last night. He's the second leading scorer on this team, the junior college transfer from Mount San Antonio College in Southern California. Good ball movement by the Gales. Kerry Carter missing a three from the corner, and Keith Schamberger, the San Jose State. Transfer with the rebound. Got to look at Stan Hardinger. Has the mismatch against Carter. Let's see if Lebeck and Carter can switch. Isaac Foto against Waldo. Foto missing in the rebound. Walker for St. Mary's. And Roxy, that's one of the biggest differences between college and the NBA. The NBA guys would have recognized that right away and found the ball and got it to Stan Hardinger and let him make a play. But the college guys, they go away from it. Brandon Spearman, an open three. Hawaii has the lead. Spearman really picking up right where he left off last night, went three for six from behind the arc. Usually more of a driver, but when talking to the Hawaii staff, he had been really their best player in the preseason until he hurt his ankle. And a steal by Garrett Nevels. Christian Stan Hardinger from distance. Way off the mark of the rebound, Stephen Holt for St. Mary's. Same thing he did last night, started out just shooting jump shots. Stan Hardinger is a tough driver, they need, he needs to go to the paint. Brad Waldo follows up his own miss and one second foul on Isaac Foto. And Brandon Spearman keeping the Rainbow Warriors in it early with the drive, the kick, and the knockdown three. flies with us. Tyco Integrated Security. Safer, smarter, Tyco. And Sleep Number, the only bed that provides comfort individualized. Beautiful look over the Pacific in a sunset from the Sheraton Waikiki. 12-11, the Gales of St. Mary's lead Hawaii. 14-23 to go in the first half of this matchup. And Isaac Foto in a big pivotal moment early in this game, Miles, just picking up his second personal foul for Gib Arnold's team. And Foto is the guy who can really bang with Waldo down low, good defensive player. I know they bring in Rositas here to back the seven footer, but I don't know if Rositas is as good defensively, especially in man to man against a guy like Waldo. And I really liked what Foto was doing on the offensive end, already four shot attempts. Rod Waldo hitting the free throw, he has five. And a two-point lead for St. Mary's. Jordan Juisty in a 6-2 sophomore from San Ramon, California for the Gales. Also, Garrett Jackson, a transfer from USC, is in as well. Keith Schamberger. Checking in for Hawaii is Davis Rositas, a seven-foot senior from Latvia, a USC transfer for Hawaii. 
Garrett Nevels, the pull up three. It's short. Christian Ten Harding on the offensive rebound and the kick out. Schamberger for Stan Hardinger. Spin to the basket. Fouled and won. And that's really where Stan Hardinger is at his best. Attacking the basket. Not a great perimeter shooter, can knock him down. But here, the physicality, he spins, draws the contact, goes to the foul line, where he has shot more than 20, 20 more free throws than the next Hawaii Rainbow Warrior. Last night, got to the line zero times. 69% foul shooter. And he gets the old school three point play and gives Hawaii the lead. And you'll see with Rositas in the game, they'll go this full court pressure, use his length to trap, and then fall back into his own. James Walker, the third, rattles out the three. Garrett Jackson, the offensive rebound. See, they go to this one, two, two, and try to make you throw over the length of the seven footer, Rositas. St. Mary's needs to get it in the gap, put a shooter on the baseline. Shot clock at 10. And stepping on the sideline, Jordan Juicy. And that's twice a St. Mary's player has stepped on the sideline. You have to be more aware of where you are on the court. Fourth turnover by St. Mary's. And Randy Benny just told Juicy, stay in bounds. <laughs> Christian Stan Hardinger spinning has a shot blocked by Garrett Jackson picked up Brad Waldo blocks the shot and a foul is called Hawaii fans wanted a goal 10 against Waldo but they'll get the foul the first on James Walker the third and I like Stan Hardinger on, on attack mode Garrett Jackson with the block the scramble Waldo went and got that one on the way up and then the foul on the backside there Stan Hardinger to the line. Began his collegiate career at Nebraska. Left Nebraska after six games of his sophomore season. First team all Big West performer last year in Hawaii's first season in the Big West. Averaged 16 points, eight rebounds a game. And Gib Arnold really feels they're better suited now for the Big West with the way this roster is shaped than maybe they were a year ago. Well, he likes the fact they're much quicker this year. The perimeter is more athletic when you add Schamberger to the starting lineup and Nevels. And so, the quickness causing a timeout. The Big West, the Big West, a league that tends to play a little bit smaller basketball. So St. Mary's taking the timeout here. Three-point lead for Hawaii as we take a look at the bracket of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Winners already today moving into the championship game. Number 14, an unbeaten Iowa State and Boise State Wednesday nights on Christmas night in the championship. And that's going to be a fun game to watch. Two versatile teams that are very similar in how they play offensively. Yeah, both teams really keep the floor spread. They have versatile big guys that can step out, knock down jump shots. They play a lot of pick and roll, motion offenses. Both teams really want to get up and down, play fast break basketball. Iowa State was, I feel, back to their normal selves today against a very tough Akron team, and, and Boise State came ready to play because you know that Frank Martin squad is always going to play hard. And Stephen Holt losing the ball out of bounds. A turnover by the Gales, their fifth. And Holt just tried to turn the corner. You got to just square up, see what the defense has given you, dribbles it right off his foot. He wanted a foul call, but... I think poor job of handling the basketball there by Holt. Long three on the way. Keith Schamberger knocks it down and a foul after the made shot and the three-pointer by Schamberger. Schamberger, I spoke about it last night that he can be a difference maker on this team. From the point guard spot, he can score the basketball as well as share it. You go under that pick, he's more than capable of knocking down deep threes as he's 36% from beyond the arc on the season. And then Christian Stan Hardinger, just because he goes so hard, him and Levesque battling down there, able to pick up a foul. And the foul on Bo Levesque, but Hawaii gives it away to St. Mary's. First turnover by the Bows. 
13-3 run for Hawaii, and they lead it by six. Gary Carter launches and hits from the corner. Can't help off a ball side corner shooter. Gary Carter too good from that range. Avis Razid is backing in Waldo. And the hook shot by the seven footer. They're leaving Waldo down there in one-on-one -on -one situations, whether it's against Fotu or Rositas. And Rositas with the strong power play right there. Hawaii off to a 15-6 run. They lead it by five. The Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic and a beautiful shot of Diamond Head in the distance. And for Hawaii, very tough ending to the ball game here against Boise State and a game that came down to the wire. And this was the final play. The runner by Garrett Nevels was off. And Boise State survives at a one-point win for the Broncos over the host Hawaii Rainbow Warriors here. And there's a little controversy there, thinking there may have been a goaltend, but the officials got it right. And if there was a goaltend, it would have been on Hawaii in basket interference when Keith Schamberger grabbed the net. And it was a very sloppily played game. 16 turnovers by the Rainbow Warriors, 15 by the Boise State Broncos. Tonight, a much more cleaner game. Boise State was dominant in their, their game prior to this one. And Hawaii's obviously off to a hot start here in the first eight minutes of this game. And six Hawaii players have already scored in this game. As the Bows lead it by five. Well, I think the problem if you're St. Mary's, you know, last night you led a South Carolina team that only shoots 40% from the field on the season, go for 58%. And then tonight, already a hot start, 53% for the Rainbow Warriors. Alley up too high for Brad Waldo and Bo Levesque has just picked up his second foul. So Isaac Fotu on the bench for Hawaii with two fouls. And now a key starter for Randy Bennett, Bo Levesque with two. And that ball just thrown, Fotu can't handle it, Levesque. Stan Hardinger maybe sold that a little bit, not much of a push, you didn't even see the hands extended. But unfortunate situation for Levesque to pick up his second. The other thing that hurt the Bows last night, Miles, was they missed some clutch free throws late. Where you have good foul shooters, Keith Schamberger missed one. And just checking in, Quincy Smith went to the line with inside eight seconds to play for a two-shot foul with the Bows down two. Rattled out the first, made the second. And they still fall one point short. Here comes Stephen Holt for the Gales. Second block that Jackson has had on Stan Hardinger. And a foul posting up Brad Waldo gets shoved by Quincy Smith, his first. Three now on the Bows here in the first half. Stays with St. Mary's as Christian Stan Hardinger volleyballs it out of bounds. That's just a tough entry pass, bad angle. Just get the ball into James Walker. He's wide open at the top and then get into the set that you want. Garrett Jackson off the inbound. Foul, shot spins out. Devise Rositas with his first. Garrett Jackson, a 73% foul shooter, shooting two. And you see just Garrett Jackson make himself available. I love that he had his arms up. Shows it gives a big target for Holt to find him in the middle of the paint. Jackson, a junior from Portland. One more coming. Played two years at USC. In fact, was a starter for about half of his, half of his sophomore season. Seven points, three rebounds a game, but left USC. And now it's a key contributor for St. Mary's. Quincy Smith losing the ball out of bounds. Ball deflected. Brandon Spearman's on the sideline and stays with St. Mary's. St. Mary's players are just telegraphing their passes. Kerry Carter, I know you want to look ahead, but you have to pass fake first, then you can put it on the floor and then throw it ahead. Utilization of the pass fake sometimes is non-existent. 
college basketball. Stephen Holt breaks the press. James Walker for three. And we're tied at 21. Nice job by Waldo to not force it. And then the unselfish play, Waldo was second on this team in assists. He's an excellent passer out of the post. Rodzinis called for a walk on the baseline. If St. Mary's can break this initial front line of the pressure, they have advantages. Gary Carter. Brad Waldo has to go right through his hands. He was home free for a dunk. Couldn't have been delivered any better. The bounce pass hits him right in his hands, in his chest. Waldo was already thinking about laying that one in or dunking it. Waldo getting a breather as Dane Pinot comes in. Freshman from Australia. Part of that Australian pipeline that St. Mary's has been using the last number of years. You think all those great Aussies that have come over, including Matthew Della Vadova, who just graduated as the all-time leading scorer in St. Mary's history. Patty Mills, Daniel Kicker, Clint Steindl. He's had 12 Australians play for him. Jordan Page, Mitchell Young, you go on and on and on, all the players that have come over. Ben Allen to St. Mary's. Good beat. Garrett Neville somehow got it back and hits it off the window. And that was actually a, deep, a good defensive possession. Carter really moved his feet. But Neville's able to come up with that basketball and knock it in off the glass. Got to be aware of where Walker and Carter is in this zone. And it fouled the perimeter. It's against Rosittis. And it's his second personal foul. So he has two. Isaac Fotu has two. We'll see what Gib Arnold does with his seven footer now. Here at Jackson attacks. And a foul. And that's now three on Devise Rosidis. And, and I think that's a smart play by Garrett Jackson. I don't know if he recognized or not that Rosidis had two, but he attacks him right off the bounce. The body contact clean up top by Rosidis. But the referee's looking at body contact on that foul call. The crowd doesn't like it as they show the replay on the video board here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Gib Arnold not happy either. That's Garrett Jackson, one more coming. So Rosidis has to leave with the three fouls. And Aaron Valdez comes in the game, a redshirt freshman from Whittier, California, wearing a sleeve on his right elbow, which he injured here last night, was relegated to just one minute last night because of that play. And right now, now the advantage, I think, swings back to St. Mary's because St. Mary's kind of likes small ball. A little bit four out, and I know Jackson is a kind of a face-up four. But Hawaii goes smaller with Fotu and Rosidis on the bench with foul trouble. And Stan Hardinger forced to play the five, steps out, missing the three. And Garrett Jackson clears for the Gales. Gib Arnold gives him a lot of freedom to shoot those shots, but Stan Hardinger just is not a great three-point shooter, only 25% on the year. Garrett Jackson shovels underneath. Pino has his shot blocked. Pino has to be able to go up right away when he receives that pass. Gary Carter, the foul, is first. Garrett Jackson made the right play. He drew two defenders and shovels it underneath. Pino just had a struggle gathering that basketball and then a great block there by the Rainbow Warriors. Christian Stan Hardinger goes inside. He is fouled. And that's really where he's at his best when he's in attack mode and using his quickness or his strength to get to the basket. Well, he gets to the foul line a ton, and in 10 games this year, he, he averages seven free throw attempts per game. He's a strong right-hand driver. He's a physical player, one of the hardest working guys on this Rainbow Warrior team. When we were at practice two days ago, Gib Arnold had to tell him, leave, leave, get out of the chase gym. chase him off the floor? Yeah, he was there literally 45 minutes after practice, continuing to work on his game. One more coming, he's four of four at the line. First foul on Dane Pinnell.
Brad Waldo coming back. And Stan Hardinger remains perfect at the line. They should look to go right inside to Brad Waldo with Stan Hardinger guarding him. Stephen Holt. Kerry Carter hangs in the air, tries to dump it for Waldo, gets the deflection back. Nifty move by Stephen Holt to Garrett Jackson for the lay -in. What a split by Stephen Holt on that pick and roll. Stan Hardinger has done a good job on the first pick and roll, but Stephen Holt recognized that he was showing hard. Beautiful job by the point guard. Pass inside. Valdez from Stan Hardinger, the lay in and one. Well, Stephen Holt. One of the better point guards in the WCC showing some elite ball handling skills. The behind the back and the dish, the dime and the finish. News and notes from the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. The upset South Carolina knocking off St. Mary's last night. Iowa State remains unbeaten. Anthony Drimmick, the leading scorer in the tournament. Anthony Drummond has been tremendous in the two games here. He had struggled coming into this tournament in their back-to-back -back losses, but he's been on attack mode. Scoring 25 and a half points per game, getting to the foul line a ton. George Niang is just one of the special forwards across the country, leading an undefeated Iowa State team. Mele Kalikimaka. It's Christmas coming up in a couple of days. An intense Hawaii Rainbow Warrior fan right there. As you look at Paul McCoy just checked in, the sixth year senior for St. Mary's, and really a remarkable story and a tough road for Paul McCoy. He began his college career at SMU. Yeah, he's had four knee surgeries his ACL a few times but this young man I actually saw him play in high school he was a late signee and we were looking for a guard when I was at the University of Arizona he was an elite level athlete but glad to see him out here on the floor and Paul McCoy is a freshman at SMU led the Mustangs in scoring averaged 13 and a half points a game but four ACL surgeries on his right leg and his right knee as Brad Waldo traveled inside Nine St. Mary's turnovers. Good help side defense there by Valdez. Hawaii is led by as many as six, as the Bows are 53% for the field. St. Mary's shooting 62% for the floor, but nine turnovers here in the first half. Christian Stan Harding on the offensive rebound, but a foul. And it's against. Garrett Jackson of St. Mary's, that's his third. Stan Hardinger, he's just working tonight. He came ready to play, put his hard hat on, has battled in the paint. He's not, hasn't been great from the field, but he's gotten to the foul line and put the St. Mary's Gales bigs in foul trouble. One and one for Stan Hardinger. It's the eighth Hawaii team foul. Bolivec with two fouls comes back. One more for Christian Stan Hardinger, the senior from Munich, Germany. He shot 22 free throws recently in a game against Shamana. Gets the roll. Seven of seven at the line. Hawaii by five. Paul McCoy. Trapped near midcourt. Call timeout. And a walk is called. Ten Gales turnovers now. Well, he split the first double team, but then he dribbled it to a danger zone on the court, dribbled into another corner. And they just pursued and trapped him, and he had nowhere to go. St. Mary's a team that only turns it over 12 times per game. They've already committed 10, and we still have 6.40 left in the half. Christian Stan Hardinger goes to work. Underneath, Aaron Valdez, the reverse land. Missed. Boldevec clears for St. Mary's. Defense! 
Have the mismatch with Waldo. Spearman guarding him. Inside, Paul McCoy, the kick out. James Walker missing a three. Loose ball. Stephen Holt claims it for the Gales. James Walker, the third, attacks and lays it in. He has eight to lead. St. Mary's, Christian Stan Hardinger with nine to pace the Bows. Nice pass by Keith Schamberger, but Valdez missing the dunk, but he's fouled. And that's three on Bolivac with St. Mary's. ESPNU's coverage of ACC basketball continues Friday when Marcus Page of the Tar Heels hosts Northern Kentucky at the Dean Dome. Friday at 7 on ESPNU, also live on Watch ESPN. Well, North Carolina, they are the most up and down team in all of college basketball. I'm sure Coach Roy Williams is very frustrated with how they've played and how inconsistent they've been. But I think they finally got some solidarity to their roster. Leslie McDonald deemed eligible now, and P.J. Harrison deemed ineligible. Now they can move on and not have to worry about those questions anymore the rest of the season. So Bo Levesque has three. To his right, Garrett Jackson has three fouls. And for Hawaii here in the first half, Devise Rosittis has three. First miss from the line for Hawaii. They're now nine of ten. Gary Carter glides through the key, misses the reverse lay-in. And a foul going for the loose ball. Garrett Nevels called for the reach, his first. And that puts St. Mary's in the line. They're in the bonus now, one and one. For James Walker, the third. Five and a half minutes to go in this first half. It's been a wildly entertaining first half so far. Yeah, James Walker, he, he's kind of keeping this team in. He's the leading scorer so far for St. Mary's. But this was a young man who was buried on the bench toward the end of last year. Didn't play in their last seven games. His minutes slowly dwindled as the year went on. But this year, confidence much higher, averaging 11 points per game and shooting the lights out from the three. Waiting for Walker to shoot the free throws here. One and one for the senior. Began his college career at Utah State. One more coming. Long Beach, California. Played at the same high school, Los Alamitos, as Landry Fields, now in the NBA. Walker, a terrific outside shooter, a career 43 percenter from downtown. Hits both free throws, and he has 10. Jordan Juicy in now for Walker. Well, despite the foul trouble, St. Mary's obviously still only down by two points. They need to start playing better defense without fouling. I know Hawaii's been, been the aggressor and been the more physical team. Kind of the way South Carolina took it to St. Mary's last night in the opening round game. Keith Schamberger. Kick out. Aaron Valdez attacks and lays it in. Schamberger just kind of froze, put the ball on the floor a ton of times, and then Valdez just made himself available. Switching those ball screens and putting the small Schamberger on Waldo. Holt or Waldo need to take advantage. Stephen Holt. Offensive rebound, the putback by Brad Waldo. And the advantage was Holt was able to beat him off the dribble, and then Waldo seals off Schamberger on his back and able to get the offensive rebound and finish. Christian Stan Harding to the basket. He is fouled by Dane Pinot, his second. Here we see Brad Waldo just trying to position himself early enough. Rides him in. He was actually getting held by Schamberger, the one arm, and he was able to go up and grab it with his left and then able to complete the play. Excellent job by Waldo to stay active on the offensive glass. 
Stan Hardinger already seven of seven at the line. For a bigger guy, he gets a lot of arc miles on his free throw. Yeah, and that allows for a soft touch when that ball comes down. 34-31, Hawaii. One more shot coming. Stan Hardinger asking him to wipe off the basketball. Said it was a little bit too, too sweaty. Hawaii is led by as many as six here in the first half. Nine of nine at the line now for Christian Stan Hardinger. Completely different player than we saw last night. Having to turn around 24 hours later, how difficult when you lose a tough game like that? I know you talked about the resiliency, but how quickly can you move on you after to, a loss like that? You have to have short-term memory. You have to move, it's like moving on when you have a turnover or, or miss, a, miss a shot, you have to move on to the next play, and in this case, move on to the next game, because you know you have another opponent and a chance to prove yourself again on the basketball floor, and then you'd love to see the, the drive and the kick out there and the knockdown by Stephen Holt. Does it help? If you're Hawaii and you see a team like St. Mary's that's up next, knowing you have a tough contest, and a foul called, and Hawaii will go back to the foul line here. Tight one late in the first half in Honolulu. One point lead for the Bows. They've really done a poor job of taking care of the basketball. Ten turnovers here in the first half have led to 12 points for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, and they've just kind of thrown it all over the gym. The bad pass on the lob to Waldo. There, Waldo doesn't jump stop. Another turnover there, shuffles his feet. And then McCoy, as soon as he comes to the game, they pressure him, they trap him, shuffles his feet, and another turnover for the Gales. So really so fouls, fouls, and the turnovers really complicating matters for St. Mary's, surprising that they're only down one. They're shooting 58% from the field. They've hit five of nine beyond the arc. They've made all seven of their free throws. But they have to find a way to keep Christian Stan Hardinger off the free throw line. He is nine of nine already at the stripe. And he misses. And he's the guy that has put Levesque, Pinot, and Jackson in foul trouble. All those guys with three fouls for Randy Bennett's squad. And still 340 left in the half. One out of two this time for Christian Stan Hardinger, who has a game-high 12 points. James Walker, the third, leads St. Mary's with 10. Jordan Juicy coming off the bench tonight for the first time this season. And because of foul difficulty, Randy Bennett's keeping Dane Pinot out there on the floor with three fouls. Deep three. No good from Stephen Holt. There is Pinot for the offensive rebound and the kick out. Nice job by Pinot just being active, get to the opposite side of the glass. Kerry Carter out of the trap. Patience from Jordan Juicy. And a steal by Aaron Valdez. Quincy Smith attacks. And a block is called against Stephen Holt. Hawaii back to the line. Well, an excellent defensive possession besides the offensive rebound for the Rainbow Warriors. And then Quincy Smith on attack mode. Just goes right into the chest of Stephen Holt. And they felt that he was in his upward motion before Stephen Holt got set. Smith at the line is 71% foul shooter. And he was the guy at the line late in the game last night with a chance to tie it with Hawaii down two, made only one out of the two. Short on the first one. Quincy Smith, a sophomore from Antioch, California. And now Randy Brennan brings in more of an offensive threat than James Walker. Walker already in double figures with 10. So a lineup of Holt, Walker, Carter, Pino and Waldo for Randy Bennett. Jim Arnold counters with Keith Schamberger. Aaron Nevels, Quincy Smith, Aaron Valdez, and Christian Stan Hardinger. Go 
right back to Waldo in the post. Walker for three, and we're tied at 37. Walker's feeling a three for five from deep right there. And just a little bit of attack to draw another defender. Freed him up. Aaron Valdez fouled underneath. And another trip to the free throw line for the Bows. Four fouls on Dane Pinot. When was the last time in a college game you saw a player with four personal fouls in the first half? I can't recall. <laughs> can't recall seeing it at all. And I don't think Randy Bennett can recall seeing it either. He's, he's letting the officials know about it. And Pino is still out there on the floor. And we still have 204 to go in the half. Randy Bennett just say he fouls out, he fouls out. Yeah, and I'm surprised we haven't seen Hodgson. One out of two for Valdez. We could even go Juicy back in the lineup. Here is Stephen Holt. But that should be a foul call. And it is. Yeah, by the rules, he was hand-checking him the whole time. He bodied him up. That should absolutely be a foul call according to how they are officiating the games this year. Give Arnold trying to plead his case. Teron Groover, our lead official. And there you see the hand on his hip, and then he bodies him up. Stephen Holt to the line. Four one and one. One more coming from Holt. Now, are, are you taught to jump over the screen in that situation? No. Well, it depends on how your coach is game planning. If they want you to fight over a guy because he's a good he's a good shooter from behind the arc, Holt can knock down threes. But sometimes, if it's extended on the floor, then you can go under. There's many different ways to defend a ball screen. Lavonis Petrullis is in. For St. Mary's, Randy Bennett going deep into his bench with foul problems now. The, the walk on the junior from Lithuania. Stephen Holt knocks in the free throws and gives St. Mary's the lead. <laughs> and a timeout taken by Gib Arnold at a 30 here. Stan Harden here was about to go right, go right back at him. 143 left first half, one point game in favor of St. Mary's. And again, the championship game in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic coming up. And it should be a thrilling game. Really should be a fun game to watch. Number 14 undefeated Iowa State Fred Hoiberg's team against Leon Rice and Boise State. And two teams that really will get up and down the floor. Yeah, if you want to see some points, both teams average over 80 points per game, want to really get up and down, both with impressive performances in their semifinal matchups today. There's a tote board for the tournament. You see Iowa State, Boise State, the two remaining unbeatens over here. South Carolina, Akron, Oregon State, one and one. Coming up at the half. Take a look at the day. Here at the Diamond Head Classic as Iowa State remains unbeaten. A preview of the championship game. And plus we'll hear from Mike Bray on the Jerry and Grant situation in Notre Dame. St. Mary's was knocked from the ranks of the unbeaten last night by South Carolina. Christian Stan Hardinger, 14 points in Hawaii. Seesaw's in front. And he just does a nice job of just slipping out of that screen and getting to his comfort zone at about 15 feet. Minute 20 left in the half. Stephen Holt, short. Christian Stan Hardinger the rebound. Here comes Keith Schamberger. Aaron Valdez for three. Just his second three-pointer of the season. And Hawaii leads it by four. Well, Schamberger did a great job of pushing the pace right there, drawing the defense, and then finding the wide open Valdez. Valdez had not hit a three since their opener back on November 8th against Tennessee State. Waldo's too far out, too far off the post. Petrullis inside for Waldo, stolen by Garrett Nevels. 
Keith Schamberger to the basket. Missing inside, Brad Waldo the rebound. Nearly had it poked away. And St. Mary's can practically play for the final shot. Looks like about a half second differential between the shot clock and the half clock. Fifteen seconds. Petrullis. They're going to make him make a play. Not comfortable out there on the floor. Offensive foul. Offensive foul. But it's Petrullis. He's in a tough situation. Hadn't played all game, didn't play yesterday. Now you come in and you're having to face pressure. That's hard for this young man. Valdez just all over him. Hits the elbow right in the chest. Easy call on the offensive foul. Now Hawaii can go for the last shot. And a foul with three seconds left in the half. About 25 feet for the basket and off the ball. And Christian said Harding will go to the line. And what could Petrullis be thinking right there? No one told him to foul. You obviously know that you're in the bonus. And he completely grabs Stan Hardinger. Just a brain cramp there by Petrullis. And his second. But you have to be, you have to, when you, they're going through the scouting reports and game plans. Just because you haven't played in a game or two and you, and you have to be just as prepared mentally for when your number is called off the bench, no matter the situation, come in ready to contribute to the team. He misses both. Walker from midcourt at the buzzer. And it's off the mark, and a 43-39 lead for the Bows and Gib Arnold at the half. Over St. Mary's, the Gales in danger of their second straight defeat. Coming up, really Matt Schick and Tim St. Mary's, 43-39. Along with Miles Simon, Roxy Bernstein with you. In the first half, you look at the shooting numbers for St. Mary's. You're going, oh, okay, they, they played pretty well. Well, turnovers and fouls really were an issue for the Gales. Yeah, really plagued them, but it was Christian Stan Hardinger is the guy that got most of those guys in foul trouble. Lebeck and, and Jackson especially, both of those guys in major foul trouble and the lack of depth for St. Mary's showing in the first half. Christian Stan Hardinger shot 13 free throws in the first half. 14 points, Aaron Valdez with 10 off the bench. James Walker, the third, 13 to lead the Gales. St. Mary shot 55% from the field in the first half. They go 6 of 11 from downtown, hit all nine of their free throws, out-rebounded Hawaii by nine, but 13 turnovers, and they put Hawaii on the line 20 times. And it's amazing that they're only down two possessions, and Stan Hardinger should be right on attack mode because St. Mary's has to play a little bit softer. Loose ball, it stays with Hawaii as we start the second half. Stan Hardinger made 10 free throws. The St. Mary's Gales only attempted nine. 15 to eight foul differential between the two teams. Dane Pinot on the bench has four fouls already for St. Mary's. Isaac Fotu picked up two early fouls in the first half. Goes to work underneath the reverse lay in over Brad Waldo. Fotu was aggressive early on. He was two for four from the field in his time on the floor. Fotu played just six minutes in the first half because of two fouls. Hawaii is equal their largest lead of the night. St. Mary's at nine and one, suffering their first loss of the Fotu's season. Fotu's going to get night. his third foul call here. Fotu and Waldo just battling in the post. Stephen Holt off the mark on a three, and Christian Stan Harding are the rebound. An illegal screen, offensive foul called Christian Stan Harding of Hawaii. Isaac Fotu, one of the more skilled posts in all of the West. Just a quick sweep through, two dribbles. Waldo tries to contest, but the soft touch on the other side of the rim. First foul on Christian Stan Hardinger. And now it's Stan Hardinger jockeying with Waldo inside. And they're trying to get it to Waldo. Stephen Holt on the drive and a foul. The second call against the Bows here in the second half. Brandon Spearman is first. 
Why you had their five game winning streak snapped by Boise State in a one point loss here last night. One of the officials here working this game. Lee Castle there will stop play momentarily for a wet spot. Six point lead for Hawaii which equals their largest of the night. Led by a six as well in the first half. Well, right now for St. Mary's if they want to win this basketball game a couple things play defense without fouling. Don't turn the basket don't turn the basketball over. And you have to get more stops still in the first half Hawaii shot 13 for 25 over 50 percent from the field. Got to look at Levesque in that high post. He's calling for the ball. Here he is, Levesque, the kick, Kerry Carter from the corner. Too strong on a three, rebound run down Stephen Holt. James Walker, the third, launches. And the rebound, Brandon Spearman, Hawaii pushes. Spearman to the basket. Gets the roll and one, he may have gotten away with the travel. Long shot, long rebound, Brandon Spearman able to just go coast to coast. Nobody stops the basketball. Spearman goes all the way, draws the contact, and is going to the line. Second on Kerry Carter. Largest lead now for the Bows at eight. Spearman makes it nine. Just this light pressure, they're not even really looking to trap or steal the basketball, just slowing up St. Mary's and, and making them work, start their offense a little bit later in the shot clock. And the Gales are in serious trouble of dropping their first two games over here in Hawaii. After coming in here undefeated at 9-0. and And then a foul is called. Christian Stan Hardinger, his second. A lot of banging going on. Stan Hardinger trying to front the post. Waldo trying to swim to get position. Stan Hardinger kind of flopped on that right there. Forty-eight thirty-nine. Hawaii with the lead, but now three team fouls in the bows and same areas uh, getting ready to deal with some adversity off the floor. They're going to lose their head coach for five game suspension as Randy Bennett and the St. Mary's Gales were dealt with the sanctions from the NCAA and a five game suspension for Randy Bennett which begins at midnight December 30th because of major recruiting violations they appealed it and it was denied by the NCAA and that was back in March when the NCAA put them on four years probation for failure to monitor its men's basketball program. They'll have a reduction of scholarships, losing two for the 2014-15, 2015-2016 seasons. No postseason sanctions, but they can't participate in tournaments like this. They're allowed to partake in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic this season because it was a contract that was already signed. And now Randy Bennett has said, or at least hasn't publicly said, who will coach the team in the interim when he is gone? One more coming for James Walker. And after this Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, Randy Bennett will address it with who will step in to coach the team in his absence. And that will be a big blow to the team. Randy Bennett, such a great X's and O's guy. That's your, your leader and, and the guy that this team relies on and looks to to guide them especially in the first four games they're gonna he's gonna miss four league games and you know as the West Coast Conference usually comes down to that last weekend one or two games can decide this league and and a possible NCAA tournament bid Brandon Spearman rattles out the three James Walker the rebound for St. Mary's but he'll miss their league opener against Pacific the newcomers to the WCC at Gonzaga the game he'll miss at the kennel Plus a game at Portland and non-conference game against William Jessup. And then the suspension will conclude after the game against Santa Clara. And then he'll return for their next game against San Francisco. Well, James Walker, he's been 
the most aggressive guy, along with Christian Stan Hardy here for Hawaii. But Walker kind of keeping St. Mary's in this basketball game. And Stan Hardinger, they kind of need to back off Stan Hardinger and, and let him shoot some jump shot, more jump shots. When he's been on attack mode, he's been tremendous tonight. Christian Stan Hardinger to the line. James Walker, his second foul. These are free throw attempts 14 and 15 for Christian Stan Hardinger tonight. And again, he shot 22 recently in a game against Shamana. Stan Hardinger rolls in the second. He is 16 to lead Hawaii. The Bows up seven. James Walker, the third, 15 to pace St. Mary's. Little 1 2 2 zone now after the three quarter court pressure. Nice pass inside. Bolivec finds Brad Waldo for the dunk. Waldo's been in double figures in every game this season for the Gales. St. Mary's not having a problem on the offensive end. It's down here where they just can't get any stops. Open three off the mark from Christian Stan Hardinger. And as I told you last possession, back off of Stan Hardinger. <laughs> he will shoot the open jump shot. He wants to score. Beck has been quiet. I think he can attack Fotu off the bounce. Fotu has to play it cautiously with three fouls. You should almost put Fotu and Levesque in the pick and rolls and not hit Stan Hardinger. Wave it off. Jordan Juicy did not get the shot off in time. Shot clock violation. And St. Mary's trying to hang in this game. True road game against Hawaii and Brad Waldo, keeping it tight with the slam. Championship game of this Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic coming up Wednesday night, Christmas night, 8.30 Eastern. And a great matchup we have for you, unbeaten. Number 14, Iowa State against the high-powered offense of Boise State. Yeah, and that should be a fabulous matchup. Both teams really like to get up and down, score a ton of points. Boise State coach Leon Rice told us after his win tonight that that was maybe their best defensive effort of the season and I know South Carolina is not an offensive juggernaut but they really took away anything and everything that South Carolina wanted to do and Iowa State was very impressive in knocking off a tough Akron team and even more impressive about Boise State's defensive performance miles but it's a quick turnaround you played last night you don't have much time to scout or prep for the next team you're going to face but they were ready to take on South Carolina but you know it's like a conference tournament type atmosphere where you, where you have to play those back-to-back -back nights and there you see Stan Hardinger passing up the jump shot and finding the better shooter in Schamberger Keith Schamberger is second three and Hawaii leads it by eight Brad Waldo underneath Bolivec off the window and in. Nice pass and nice catch, and then Levesque able to gather and go up strong. Former walk-on, the all-academic performer of the WCC, cuts the lead to six. Garrett Nevels spots up, misses the three. Brad Waldo the rebound and a reach-in on Brandon Spearman is second. And here you see Keith Schamberg adds another dimension to this team. He's right here in the middle of the floor. And first he gives it up to Stan Hardinger, moves to the open spot, able to get his feet set, holds the follow through, knock down three point shot. Carter has to be active in the middle, present himself as a target. Again, St. Mary's easily breaks the press. Waldo to Levesque for the land. Brad Waldo is an excellent passer, something that Randy Bennett really credits him as growing as part of his game. He's second on this team in assists. Back-to-back -back assist there for Waldo. Oh, 
He's Schamberger on the drive. Pass deflected by Kerry Carter. And a walk is called. Brandon Spearman catching the ball but falling down. And it goes to St. Mary's. And here you see St. Mary's handling the pressure much better in the second half. They skip it ahead. Bo Levesque flashes back door. No rotation on the backside by the Rainbow Warriors on back-to-back -back possessions. And now the press is called off after two straight layups. Gib Arnold's content to retreat to the half court. St. Mary's team that is won 25 games, at least 25 games in each of the last six seasons. Just one of four schools in college basketball. You want to talk about a model of consistency. Well, St. Mary's is right there with Gonzaga, Duke, and Kansas, the only schools in the country to accomplish that. Garrett Neville's the rebound. Neville's coast to coast gets the roll. How many times last night did St. Mary's have that same problem stopping Dwayne Notice or Tyrone Johnson. At least four or five layups they gave up just in transition by not stopping the basketball. And that's Stephen Holt's job. He has to, whether it's his man or not, if you're the first guy back, call, I got ball, I got ball, or, or point out to one of his teammates to stop it in transition. Levesque well, looks hesitant on the offensive end tonight. Shot clock at five. There is Levesque. Looking for Waldo, lays it in. He was so effective getting to the paint last night just on dribble drives, and they were able with the vision to drop it off as he drew Waldo's defender to him. Isaac Foto. Pretty move. The spin and the hook off the window. Foto is just so skilled. Can do so many things in that post area. Excellent playing with his back to the basket as well as facing up. James Walker the third. Too strong on the three and a foul going for the rebound and it's on St. Mary's. And Isaac Foto, the man with one of the best dues in all of college basketball, the spin, the touch leading the Rainbow Warriors up by six. Marys. James Walker, the third 15 to lead the Gales. Christian Stan Hardinger is 12 of 15 from the line. He has 16 to pace the Bows. And Hawaii is shooting at 54% for the field. But turnovers and fouls, the real issue for the Gales here tonight. Yeah, and then you see Brad Waldo. He's having to work for everything that he gets. Game plan not to let him touch it, force him off the block. Stan Hardinger doing everything he can to body him up. He gives away about 40 pounds to Waldo, but there Waldo just able to find a little bit of space, carve a niche down low as, as his partner was able to, Bo Levesque was able to drive the paint and drop that ball off, but nothing coming easy for the big fellow tonight. They're certainly making life difficult for Waldo. As you highlighted last night, that mouth guard. <laughs> one of the best in one of the best in the country he has the the fangs hanging <laughs> Love seeing that Hawaii with the ball and a six-point lead Bows at 55% shooting five of eight here in the second half They're Only turned it over five times make it six here, Jackson has had a nice impact on this basketball game. Six points, two blocks, and now a steal. Holt is a guy that has to get going. He's been tremendously quiet. Only five, five points, one for five from the field. And Stephen Holt gets going right there, cuts the lead to four. Holt has played off the ball for most of his career because he's had Mickey McConnell and Matthew Della Vadova running the point. But I think he's a young man that's up to the challenge potential all WCC performer. Quincy Smith to the basket. The follow spins out for Devise Rositis. And a foul against St. Mary's. Garrett Jackson has just picked up his fourth. And Waldo was able to block the initial shot there. But then the follow-up and the persistence by the Rainbow Warriors allowing Spearman now to go to the foul line. 
Spearman one of one at the line. He has nine. Olivet comes back as Jackson leaves with the four fouls. And Spearman gets both. And now you see with Rositas, the different types of pressure that they that they have depends on the personnel that's in the game. Two on one if they want to attack. Bolivet. Brad Waldo to follow. They're breaking the full court pressure with these. The last three times that they've seen full court pressure, three layups. But with Rositas in the game, they go to that one, two, two with Rositas on the ball, trapping the first pass. Isaac Futu. Pass deflected. James Walker the steal. He goes to the basket. Brad Waldo again on the follow. Waldo's a workhorse. Sprints the floor, doesn't assume that his guy is going to make the layup in St. Mary's right back in this ballgame. Timeout, Hawaii. As the Bows' lead is dwindled down to two, St. Mary's making a push. Hawaii trying to hang on. Going, he's an excellent offensive rebounder. He follows up the play there, and the soft hands and soft touch on the finish off the fast break. Brad Waldo with 10 here in the second half, 17 for the game. Two point lead for Hawaii. And here's the guy, Stan Hardinger. The energy for the Rainbow Warriors went down when Stan Hardinger went out of the game. Let's see if he brings that same type of fire that he's played with throughout the whole game. Off balance, the runner no good from Christian Stan Hardinger. Got away with the travel. Here comes Kerry Carter for the Gales, a chance to tie. Stephen Holt. Olivec drives the kick for the lead. Kerry Carter short on the three. And the rebound, Christian Stan Hardinger for the Bows. Carter's had some good looks tonight, just not able to knock him down. Davis Rosinas lays it in off the feed from Schamberger and one. Well, I think they're calling for a wet spot. You can wipe that, wipe the floor down. That's what it is. It looked like they were calling a foul. I didn't see one. But an excellent pass there by Keith Schamberger and Rositas able to hang in the air and be able to finish as Waldo avoids the foul. Four point Hawaii lead. So again, we see the full court pressure. Remember the last three times that they've pressed, three layups for the Gales. Let's see if they attack. Waldo. James Walker to the basket. Walker somehow gets it back and pulls it away from traffic. Waldo fouled the fourth on Davis Rositas. Eight oh three remaining, and Brad Waldo to the line. And Valdez getting ready. Aaron Valdez getting ready to check back in this basketball game. Had a great impact in nine minutes, had 10 points in the first half. One more coming. Valdez returns, replacing Rosinas. Short. And the rebound lost out of bounds. It's a St. Mary's basketball. And he really just missed that so bad 
that it was hard for Stan Harding to anticipate where that ball was going to land. Caught it by surprise. Yeah. And plus he was battling Bo Levesque, who tried to slice in and get the offensive rebound. Let's see if St. Mary's can take advantage of the extra possession. In the zone, Hawaii needs to be know where James Walker is at all times. Gary Carter, three. Perfect way to dissect the zone, get that ball inside and out, side to side. Kerry Carter right in rhythm on that one. And I love the backspin on the ball. Brandon Spearman hobbling a little bit for Hawaii. Swatted by Brad Waldo. One point game, we're going down to the wire. Hawaii and St. Mary's in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. They're the records for the teams that are over here. Headed to an Iowa State, Boise State championship game Christmas night. Here from Honolulu, South Carolina, Akron, Oregon State, picking up wins. And George Niang leading Iowa State into the championship game with a win over Akron. George Niang, one of my favorite players in all of college, college basketball. He's so versatile. He has an excellent post-up game. Hasn't shot it well from the three on the season by his percentage. But today, knocked down quite a few from behind the arc. And Anthony Dremick, he's been on attack mode in both nights tonight, doing it from behind the arc, attacking the rim, getting to the lane, drawing fouls and finishing and being the overall leader for that Boise State Bronco team through their first two games. Can we expect to see them go head-to-head -head in, in that game? I think there's gonna be a chance that they do. I, you know, I don't know how they'll match up. Um, Niang, you don't wanna necessarily put Drimmick on Niang because Niang can draw fouls and post him up a little bit. You wanna keep Drimmick fresh for the offensive end. Shot clock at two. They don't know it. Schamberger launches. Missing the desperation three, Brad Waldo, the rebound, and St. Mary's looking for the lead. It would be their first of the second half. Deflected by Christian Stan Hardinger. Aaron Valdez attacks, misses. Brandon Spearman, the follow slam. And that gets the crowd going here. Brandon Spearman following up that play with the big time slam. Crowd trying to become a factor. Bowl of back, ties the game. Timeout, Randy Bennett. Well, first we see Valdez leading the break. Misses it, but Brandon Spearman not giving up on the play, throws it down. And then now the pick and pop action, confusion defensively by the Rainbow Warriors, leaves Bo Lebec as the knockdown man there, 46% entering tonight's action from the three. Tied at 63, 624 to play. Brad Waldo now leads St. Mary's with 17. James Walker, the third, has 15. Wow, for Hawaii, they're led by 16 from Christian Stan Harding or 12 from Brandon Spearman. Give Arnold not happy with his squad right now. He's letting him have an earful. But I like that Brandon Spearman trying to encourage his teammates to stay, stay positive. So full timeout was taken here. And a 63 all game between Hawaii and St. Mary's here at the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic along with Miles Simon, Roxy Bernstein with you. And this game has had its moments tonight. A lot of fouls in the first half. We're seeing more fluidity, fluidity here in the second half between St. Mary's and Hawaii. Yeah, both teams are playing foul-free defense and both teams still, still on attack mode. It's still been a free-flowing, up-and-down game. Pressing by Hawaii has led to some easy buckets for St. Mary's, but the the thing for St. Mary's, they, they fought really an uphill battle all night last night against South Carolina. Could never get over the hump. Remember, they tied it with less than 10 minutes left in that game. Now tonight, they get it tied again. Can they get a stop and get a lead and build some more momentum? Here comes Keith Schamberger up the floor. I feel arguably this could be the most important defensive possession of the game for St. Mary's. 
That part of the reason why Randy Bennett took that timeout? Yeah, I think just to get him locked in, get him dialed in. Isaac Fotu, and a foul is called. First on Brad Waldo. And, and that's Fotu being the go-to guy right there. They get him isolated in the post. They're not bringing a double team. Fotu loves to spin either way. A little bit of an up fake, gets Waldo in the air, draws the contact, and now Fotu going to the line. Fotu is 68% free throw shooter. Eight points tonight. Shot spins out. And again, that heavily taped right hand. There's a broken bone right in the middle of his right hand, and that's what that tape job with the pad is protecting. And they decided that he could play through it, didn't need surgery, that it's just going to heal on its own. So St. Mary's holds them to one point there now with, with a chance to take the lead, something that they haven't seen in a long time. If I'm St. Mary's, I want to attack. I'm in the bonus. Rolovec trying to post up on a mismatch. And an offensive foul against Bo Levesque, and that's the fourth on Levesque. So Levesque has four. Dane Pinot has four. Garrett Jackson has four for the Gales. And Randy Bennett can't believe it. You can read his lips there. This is unbelievable. Beck has to be careful to get his fifth. <laughs> and now Christian Stan Hardinger is called for an offensive foul. And that's his the, third. The same official made both calls. Stan Hardinger just trying to work and get across the lane there. Gets tangled up. I mean, not much, not much by either guy. Kind of a play on situation. Combined 35 fouls in this game. Again, St. Mary's looking for the lead this trip. Trying to get it to Waldo in a reach in on Keith Schamberger, his second. And that puts St. Mary's at the line for a one and one, the eighth Rainbow Warriors team foul. Well, Hawaii seems get content to switch those ball screens, and Schamberger's just caught behind. Waldo does a good job of sealing them off with his body. Waldo not a great foul shooter, only 61% on the year. And one out of three tonight. Rattles out. Christian Stan Harding of the rebound for Hawaii. And still, they can't get over the hump. Stan Harding to the basket. Isaac Fotu the offensive rebound and put back. Gary Carter spins out on a three in the rebound. Brandon Spearman for the Bows. Stan Hardinger is fouled inside. Third on Kerry Carter. And Kerry Car Carter didn't need to reach. Bo Levesque had actually done a good job of moving his feet, and Stan Hardinger was either going to take a tough shot or kick that ball out, but Carter bails him out. One and one for Stan Hardinger is Hawaii now in the bonus. One more coming. He is now 13 of 16 at the line tonight. 17 points for the senior from Germany. St. Mary's had possessions to get the lead and just couldn't do it. Waldo misses the one and one. Come on, baby. That time of the game, it could come back to haunt them. Walker's been quiet as of late. Shot clock at eight. 
Stephen Holt to the basket. Gets the roll with the left hand. What a play by Holt. Able to switch in the air to the left hand and with the soft touch. Garrett Nevels along the baseline, the reverse land. Just too easy by Holt. He's a better defender than that. He opened up the stance, and Garrett Nevels took advantage. 30-second timeout, St. Mary's, 3-11 remaining. Milwaukee 70, St. Mary's 65. Take a look at this moment of brilliance brought to you by K Jewelers. And it's Brandon Spearman, one of the best athletes on this Rainbow Warrior squad, following up the miss by Valdez with the monster throwdown. Five point lead. 3 11 remaining. And a St. Mary's team that came over to this Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic at 9 0, including some. Impressive wins at Boise State. They beat thoroughly a good Akron team. We've seen how good Akron can play over here in this tournament. Yet they lose to South Carolina last night and now are in danger of a second straight loss after the 9-0 start. And we hit it on in the open. In these three-game tournaments, you want to try to come out 3-0 or 2-1. But St. Mary's in danger of losing these first two. Stephen Holt, Gary Carter, a good luck. Knocks down the three. A little bit of a defensive lack, confusion on how they were going to guard that pick and roll action, and Holt just drives it right to the middle, and Carter replaces up top and knocks it down. Stan Harding to the basket, muscles it up and in. He has 20, his sixth 20 point game of the season. When he plays like this, Hawaii is just a completely different ball club. Stephen Holt missing. Keith Schamberger the rebound. Excellent block out by Schamberger. For three. Christian Stan Hardinger the rebound. Stripped by James Walker and a foul against Brandon Spearman of Hawaii. Free throws for the Gales. We're going down to the wire, the Stan Sheriff Center. Hawaii clinging to a four-point lead. ESPNU's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Hawaiian Christian Stan Hardinger forcing the action for the Bows. Well, he only has three buckets. He's three for ten from the field, and we're going to show you all of them. But he's been on attack mode there with the little slip into the pick-and-pop action. And here's his last one, just driving hard, gets the land, but he's been to the foul line 17 times, making 14 of them, accounting for those 20 points, but he's just been ultra-aggressive and setting the tone early on in this game for the Rainbow Warriors. James Walker, the third, at the line. He's 4-4 at the stripe tonight. 1-1 one one for the senior from Long Beach, California. One more coming. He has tied a career high with 16 points. For St. Mary's, are they going to be tough enough on the defensive end, not surrender layups, no offensive rebounds, and be able to put a couple stops together in the last couple minutes to try to win this game? And Walker missing, and Christian Stan Harding are the rebound. Two minutes remaining. Hawaii with the ball and a three-point lead. Christian Stan Hardinger to the basket, swatted by Brad Waldo, and St. Mary's comes away with it. Third block for Waldo. Big-time defensive play by Waldo. Stan Hardinger just put his head down and was trying to draw a foul. Are you looking for Waldo here? Yeah, he has the mismatch on the switch. Bolivac ties the game. 
great roll and replace action there by the St. Mary's Yales. Good call by Randy Bennett. 72 all and a timeout taken by Gib Arnold and Hawaii. Or oh, the block by Brad Waldo and St. Mary's ends up capitalizing and tying this one up. Well, Brad Waldo moves his feet pretty well, avoids the contact, comes down, all ball up top there. And then on the offensive end, the roll and replace. Boat 2 tries to tell Schamberger to switch, but it's too late. Boat Levesque, one of the best three-point shooters in this tournament, able to knock down the set shot three. Each side has two timeouts remaining. 72 all. This game has featured 10 ties, five lead changes. Largest lead for Hawaii was nine. The biggest for St. Mary's was four. Team fouls, nine on the Bows in the second half, seven against St. Mary's. And on a tie up, it'll go to the Gales. Foul issues for St. Mary's. Dane Pinot, Bo Levesque, Garrett Jackson with four. For Hawaii, Davis Rositis with four. And if I'm Hawaii, the guy I go to, Isaac Foto, he's five for seven from the field. He's been pretty much unstoppable in the post area. Guarded by Jackson. And they're looking for him. Christian Stan Hardinger. Lobs it for Foto. Backs down Jackson. Spins. Scores! Timeout, Randy Bennett and St. Mary's. Isaac Foe, two miles. You called it, they went to him, and it worked. They left him in one on one. The guy is just too skilled. He has a soft touch around the basket. He was the co Big West freshman of the year. They find him. Jackson's actually been a very good defender throughout the evening, but he feels Jackson on the high side. The spin, the shot blocker, Waldo, comes over just a split second too late for Foe to able to finish at the rim and give the Rainbow Warriors the lead. So the 6'8 sophomore from Auckland, New Zealand. Who was born in England has given Hawaii a two-point lead. His dad, Manu, was a pro rugby player in England. And already international experience, Foto playing for the New Zealand national team. And he gives Hawaii a two-point lead. 46.7 seconds remaining. Now on this end of the floor, I'm looking for Stephen Holt or Brad Waldo. Those are the two guys. This match inside as Levesque drives. Leans in. Foul and one. Foto with his fourth, and Bo Levesque with a chance to get St. Mary's a lead from the line. And pretty much Bo Levesque had nowhere to go. Foto did a great job of moving his feet. But Levesque, the former walk-on, just with persistence, a little body contact is what the official saw, and then the soft touch by Levesque. A 94% free throw shooter. Misses. And Hawaii with the rebound, and the Bulls can play for the last shot. They have two timeouts if Gib Arnold wants to use, and he does. And Lebec just totally short on that free throw, got no legs into it. Looks like he even just rushed it a little bit. A 94% free throw shooter who usually doesn't miss one that bad. So the full timeout used by Hawaii. But a 94% foul shooter trying for an and one, and Bo Levesque missing and the rebound goes to the bows and with 21.1 seconds remaining hawaii now has the basketball and a chance to win the game here at home against st mary's and on this possession give arnold's diagramming a play are you going back to isaac Foto? oh you have to the guy has been unstoppable one-on-one -on -one. the question is is randy bennett going to bring a double team if he does get it in the post they haven't doubled all night anybody down low but Hawaii's been very effective, and especially Fotu scoring down there uh, whenever he wants. So Isaac Fotu has been the guy in the post in a one-on-one -on -one situation. We'll see if St. Mary's comes with a double team. Maybe they'll mix it up this time. And the thing you have to worry about if you're St. Mary's, 
A lot of times in these end of game situations, it's not the first shot that hurts you, it's the offensive rebound, the second shot. You have to make sure, be aware of when your guy's coming to crash the boards. If you're Hawaii, when do you want to take this shot? How much time on the clock? Well, it, you want to start to get into your offense with about eight seconds left, because you want to make sure you get a shot up and then give yourself enough time to maybe tip the ball in, you know, shoot it with four or under. You don't want to give St. Mary's a chance to go coast to coast and get, get some type of look off. 21.1 seconds. 74 all. And it's Lebec on foe two. Garrett Jackson out of the game. Keith Schamberger will initiate. 10 seconds. Schamberger. Christian Stan Hardinger gets it from the baseline. 1.4 seconds remain. Bolivic's pass intercepted. And that's the ball game. And the Rainbow Warriors from Hawaii have stunned Randy Bennett and St. Mary's. Shot Christian Stan Hardinger with 1.4 seconds remain. What a finish. What a finish. A broken play. Schamberger just creating, gets to the middle. Good things happen when you get two feet in the paint. And actually, by Waldo coming out and contesting that shot, caused Stan Hardinger to put a little bit more arc on it and come down a little bit softer. Nothing but the bottom of the net. For Stan Hardinger, Kip Arnold, and the Rainbow Warriors. We've seen some magical moments here in this tournament. Over the five years now of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, a couple of years ago, Hawaii had a win at the last second against Xavier. And now, with 1.4 seconds remaining, Christian Stan Hardinger gives the Bows the victory over St. Mary's. Coming up on Christmas night, it'll be the championship game. Highlighting four games on Christmas here from the Stan Sheriff Center. Undefeated number 14, Iowa State and Boise State in the championship of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. But a thriller here to wrap up day two from Honolulu. And the Rainbow Warriors, some dramatics at the end. Christian Stan Hardinger, 22 points, and the game-winning shot, 1.4 seconds to go, gives Hawaii the victory. For Miles Simon and our outstanding ESPN crew, Roxy Bernstein saying mahalo and aloha from the 50th state in Honolulu. Final score, the Rainbow Warriors, 76. St. Mary's, 74. Good night from Hawaii. You're watching ESPN's Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers.